All right, well, we just got the announcement from the Fed that he has flagged lower interest rates in 2024. It appears that the pivot is upon us finally from the Fed, and we saw that the markets have initially responded well, and a lot of our favorite stocks have jumped, giving us some profits, but I still feel the need for some caution going into the end of close today and into the end of this week, because... The markets are elevated. A lot of stocks are near their 52-week highs. And so the question is, is this enough good news for the momentum to build, to push us higher, or is there going to be some digestion on this good news? Because again, remember, the market expected this from the Fed. The market's already priced in a 100 basis point cut in 2024. And so now we're getting the signal that we weren't wrong, that the Fed sees what, what all the analysts sees and that the economy is doing pretty good. Uh, but how is the market going to digest this? Now, personally, I've been saying that I felt that there was a buy the dip opportunity. And going into this week, I did buy the dip and I'm enjoying some nice swings up today right now. Now, I will tell you that I kept my position size small. And so it's not a monumental win, but I've got a lot of things that are up 50% right now as far as call options. I'm going to go into a big uh, crypto swing trade that I've been talking to you guys about. I'm going to break down some technicals and make a forecast on a meme coin. I think you guys should watch it because even if you're not into crypto, I think the points I'm making about how crypto is going to move might be interesting to you, as well as I'm going to cover some big tech stocks, uh, and we're going to just review some technicals there as well. This is the Stocks with Josh show. I'm in Hawaii till the end of the month, enjoying a little bit of life, enjoying my family, and I hope that you guys, whatever time you have off ahead of you, that you can enjoy your family and just take in everything that's happened in 2023 and get prepared to have an amazing 2024. I love the the New Year's. I always have. I've always been a big celebrator of the New Year's. Uh, you know, you guys know my buddy Stock Up with Larry Jones. I'll go over to his house. I'm not in town right now, but in the past, I've gone over there with a journal, and I love to ask questions about people. What are your plans for 2024? Because it's it's just the concept of basic rebirth. It's the birth of a new year. And to me, that just screams opportunity. I want to encourage you guys to begin to think about where you're taking your financial plans in 2024. And here's the most important question, because if you are journaling with me going into the end of this year, the very next question after I ask you, where are you going, is how are you going to get there? Now, I'm going to tell you that every single time I get ready to go into a new year, especially with my trading, despite all of my years of experience, I try to go in and become stronger at what I know, and I press into education. I ordered some trade books, some different books I hadn't read. I'm going to be pushing into reading those going into the next year. It's basically the concept of sharpening the axe. Guys, I'm here. I'm pressing in, and I know you can follow me along by hitting that subscribe button and join me on the journey of becoming a stronger investor in 2024. Now, to that point, I've got some stocks to go over with you guys, and we're just going to take an overall reaction to the market itself. If we take a step back and just look at the heat map, we see that crypto is doing very, very well. Bitcoin is taken off. Uh, Avalanche is one of the outperformers. Cardano is up at 10%, going much higher. I know people have been shocked by the move in Cardano. I was. In years past, or in months past, I talked about the critical threshold of 40 cents and 48 cents. Man, when those broke, it just pushed us up into the price range above. And that's kind of what I'm going to be talking to you about, even about some of the big tech stocks that I'm covering. And one of the cryptos that I'm going to be covering today is when we do eventually press through areas of resistance, there's often very little resistance above those areas because the resistance has kept the stock from moving into that price range for a long time. So when you finally break through that area, that sell barrier, that's when you can see price moves that are explosive. That's what we're seeing with Avalanche. That's what we're seeing with Cardano. And I'm going to go over it with you guys with a couple big tech stocks as well as another hot crypto. I personally have taken the position that I'm going to err on buying the dip in December for the potential of a big move to fully retest the all-time high for some of our big, favorite big tech companies as well as the SPY. I'm leaning towards buying the dip. I don't believe at the moment that there's enough reason for these markets to sell off or capitulate, but we've got to watch them and I'll be watching them with you guys. All right, we're going to talk about Amazon. Now, guys, I gave you guys the area of resistance for Amazon at being $149 and 
I also gave you guys the area of support at 144.70. And you see, over this last week, we literally came down and bounced on the area of support that I gave at 144. Then we came right up and tagged 149. Here's the thing I want you guys to understand with Amazon. That 149 level is the super critical level, that if we actually get above it and close for one or two days, that signals that Amazon is going to move up to that new trade range as high as $160. And so we're continuing to watch that level right now. And Amazon is showing strength, pushing up against that level. It's given us a series of higher lows when it's pulled back. It's not breaking the previous low and it's pushed up higher, giving us the belief that we could be looking for at a breakout moment right now at 149. Now, here's what I want you guys to understand. If you're a long-term investor and it gets rejected right now at 149, areas of support beneath are 140 and 135. But there's gonna come a point in time when we do, and if we do break above 149, it's gonna create a ton of FOMO because people are gonna know right then and there it's not coming back to those levels of support. And instead, we're gonna move between that 150 and that 160 range, and nobody will know if it will come back to those lower levels and when it possibly would. It would be pushing on to go back to all-time highs. That's absolutely a possibility with Amazon. All right, let me take a quick station break for the Moomoo Investment app. Guys, if you're trying to get your trade game in order and you live in the US, Australia, and Canada, it's a zero cost to trade platform, and in the United States, their best offer right now is to receive up to 15 free stock, but what they've really done well recently is they're now giving one of the highest paydays or, or interest rates for just sitting cash in the account and letting it sit. It's at 5.1%. So get your free stock, earn some interest on your cash and start trading with better trade tools. All right, let's dive into Tesla. Now guys, I'm going to break down this case. Now my bias for Tesla, if you've been following my page, is bullish. I actually see less reason for it to come all the way down to the critical level of support, which I'll give you here in just a minute. And I see more opportunity for it to possibly break out and move higher all the way up to 262. But here's what's going to have to happen technically for either of those to happen. Well, we fell below a critical level of 235, and we are going to have to reclaim that level of 235 today, and we should hopefully see it close above 235 today. Now, if it does that, to get to 260, the only significant area of resistance is 245. And so that's what it would need to overcome to break out up to 260. And I think that if we got back up to 245 at this point and closed above it, that would be a surefire sign that we are going to 260. Now, to begin to break down, there's a number of layers of support beneath it to the next significant area of entry, which would be 212. It would have to break and not bounce on the 50. Moving average, it would have to break and not bounce on the 200-day moving average, and it would have to break through 235, 228, and 217. Those are all strong layers of support to be able to get down to that 212 level. And so it's between that 212 level and 260, and that's kind of where we've been trending and moving sideways. And in my opinion, Tesla has yet to choose a strong path but those are the areas that I'm going to be watching it, and my bias is to the upside. But if I'm wrong, I'm, there's two ways I'm hedging myself. One, I am having a small position size on my call options, very small position size until I see a confirmation of direction, and then I can scale. And the other thing is that if it does ultimately come down to my area of uh, support that I'm identifying. To me, that's just an entry that's a great place for a long-term entry, and I would be a buyer at 212 and very likely a buyer at 217. Those are the areas where I would be investing in my long-term portfolio. Okay, guys, we've got one more important trade to go over with you guys that's a big trade for me, and that is a crypto, and that I, it's one I've already talked with you guys about. That's SHIB. And I'm going to tell you guys that I am wanting to sound an alarm that I see in the charts that SHIB absolutely has not hit its local peak for this current trend move up that we've seen in Bitcoin. And I also want to remind you guys that the altcoins, the large cap, small cap, and the meme coins, they, they go up together with Bitcoin, but they don't peak at the same time. The smaller the cap size of the coin, the later it typically peaks after Bitcoin peaks. Now, we don't even know if Bitcoin has peaked, but even if it had, 
there's opportunity for the meme coins to peak later. And so I'm going to show you guys in the chart that I think that SHIB has uh, room to the upside. And I'm going to tell you guys where I think it's going. And I'll tell you right now, where do I think SHIB's going? I think it's going to a minimum of 12 cents. And that would be a pretty nice 30 to 40 percent move from here. Now, there is actually opportunity for it to get up to 15 cents, which would be a 50 percent move up. And there's even opportunity for it to get up to 17 cents, I would say, potentially in the next two months. And that would be a 65 percent move. So there's a ton of money potentially to be made on ship. Now, I dropped 20 K at nine cents for a swing trade. You guys can follow me along, hit that subscribe, and I'll let you know how that turns out. But I'm believing that SHIB has yet to get going. I also dropped a bag on Doge, and so I've got my investment split up between the two of them, and I'm expecting a move higher. So let's do a quick breakdown of how the technicals look right now on SHIB. Well, we're in a bullish trend. The 9 EMA is above the 34 EMA, which shows that we are moving faster right now. We're also above the 200-day moving average, which means typically that it's in the hands of the bulls. Anything below the 200-day moving average means the bears are 100% in charge. When it's above the 200-day moving average, it means that the bulls are leading the way. Now, I also want to take a look at the monthly chart. And this is where I find my most clues or my optimism or my bullish bias for SHIB. When you look at the monthly chart, you can begin to see a pretty strong pattern of decline and pop, right? If you look over the course of time, every single time SHIB began to make an up move, it typically gave us two solid months in which that up move was realized. And every time that SHIB broke out, it broke out a minimum of a 100% move up. Now, we are finally at the point where cryptos are doing a change of character and having breakout moves. I mean, we talked about Cardano, Solana, and Matic surprising us to the upside. And I'm going to tell you that SHIB and Doge are not going to be left behind. They're just going to peak later. And so a lot of people are expecting this move to have ended at 10 cents, maybe 11 cents, but it's not. It's going to move higher from my point of view. Now, I personally think that we're going to get a full 100% move from the local bottom to the local top. And right now, all we've realized is between a 50 to 60% move. And so there's still a full 40% profit gain opportunity in SHIB. And that's if it simply did what it's done in the past. Now remember, Cardano did not do what it simply did in the past. It had a full change of character, broke out above the high end of the expected move, which some would say would have been 40 cents, and some would have said that the next level was 48 cents. We're way above that, right? So it's really been explosive, closer to getting closer to 200% move. And I think that SHIB, the minimum expected move is 100%, and that would put us between 12 to 14 cents, and there's the opportunity for it to go as high as 17 cents. And so there's a ton of potential gas in the tank with the SHIB and Doge move, and I wanted you guys to be aware of it. Now, I also am watching the RSI on a longer time frame, and you want to do that when you want to get a big picture view of something, and I'm looking at the weekly RSI, and I see that there is a trend breakout. Now, when you see a trend breakout of momentum, which I believe that the RSI is showing that, those typically have a much longer sustained move up. And so even if we have pullbacks, Again, I think those pullbacks are investable in some of these coins, and those are the places I'm going to be buying. So right now, I'm in at $0.09, cents and I'm expecting that move up to $0.12, $0.13, 14 and possibly $0.17 cents for SHIB. I will be taking profits along the way, locking in gains. I wanted you guys to see that. We also don't have any monthly what I'd call FOMO wicks. I like to look at the monthly timeframes to see if we see any form of capitulation. We don't have that right now. So there's bullishness in the monthly candlesticks for SHIB and Doge. Now I'm going to give you guys a couple predictions for SHIB. Best case scenario right now is in the next 30 days, we hit 15 to 17 cents on SHIB. And then we come down after that and we find support between 11 and 12 cents, which means there will be no more buying SHIB at nine cents over the next couple months, right? Then in April of 2024, we have the halving event and SHIB takes off to the moon to 26 cents, which would be a monumental move. And I think that could happen by quarter two of 2024. And so, like I said, there's money to be made here. Now, the best case scenario is that this goes faster and quicker than I'm expecting. And we could possibly get to 26 cents 
much sooner, maybe even the next 30 days. And that moving forward after that, it pulled back and found support at 16, 15 or 17 cents and moved up from there going into 2024. So that would be, I guess, a best case scenario and a better case scenario. So guys, let me know in the comments section if you have any questions. I wanted to get this trade out in front of you so that you guys were aware of what I'm doing. Um, and uh, you know, like I said, I'm on vacation, but I'm staying connected. I hope this was helpful to you guys today. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you wanna hear the outcome of these trades. As always, peace and blessings. Take care, we'll talk to you soon.